Hello, good afternoon again guys, it's uh, Stephen here again. Uh, the video for today would be the part two of the functionality within P6 that you as a planner would probably need to know to help you get through your life cycle as a project planner utilizing P6 as the software tool. So the first thing I will show you guys is the driving. It's a very, very important functionality within P6 that you could use to analyze your software um, programs etc when they come in or when you're building a program and literally to, in order to get that uh, functionality out you go over to the columns customize and usually there it is uh, so it's not in there yet so I just click over here customize and there you have it driving there it is so usually just open this out get it out and literally just put it straight in there and that's for all the bits that you'd need underneath here so the start and finish dates literally are the most important your lags your relationship the activity ID the activity name and the driving so I'll give you a quick run through on what the driving in essence means this basically just means that the slack or the total float between this activity, for instance, if I highlight it, this activity, which is the asbestos uh, notification slash removal, the predecessor to that is the enabling works uh, activity A1020. And it says, yes, it's a driving activity. So that means the total float between the A1020 and delay EOT1 extension of time 1 is 0 that's literally what this means so if the predecessor was delayed it would inadvertently affect the start or the early start dates for the delay EOT1 activity that's in essence what that means and if this activity was delayed it would in essence affect activity A1040, activity A1228, but guess what? It wouldn't affect activity A1230. So literally from this one activity, we've got three different relationships coming out. We've got all finish to start relationships. So if you were doing the forward pass from this, which one of these activities do you reckon you would take as the early start time of the successor activities? When you look at it, it would most likely be this activity here because when you do the forward pass it would be the latest activity and that looks like it would be this 28th of October so this will be the latest here finish 20th of October and they're all finished to start so this will be the latest here and this is the 11th of November but guess what it's actually not driving it why is that and this activity actually finishes later all this means is this is the start date which is the 31st this is the end date of this activity here now this activity finishes the 5th of August if you look at it it's driving the 8th of August of course it's driving the 5th of September because it's got a 21 day lag on it so it definitely is driving it so if you had 21 working days onto the 5th of August it would give you an early start time closer to this and closer to this but for this activity here it's the 31st it doesn't drive it and if we go over to it to check why so we go to and we go to this activity and as you can see it's got its own predecessor so there are two relationships coming out of uh, coming into this that, that, that are predecessors you've got a1228 which finishes on the 28th of August and it's a finish to start with this activity whereas this uh, delay EOT activity finishes on the 5th of August so clearly it's not going to drive this activity is it so it's got at least a couple of days um, float in there between the two activities so in essence this just gives you an overview on what the driving literally means and it's a very good good uh, technique for uh, analyzing your schedules, your programs, etc., analyzing delay, 
you know literally for that now what you could do is always when you're trying to analyze delay etc there isn't any um, progress on this schedule so it's still an as planned uh, schedule but I'll show you what exactly I mean by that so in essence you just go and you collapse two. so collapse it to the third and let's see that's it okay so usually what you would do in an instance like this you draw it over here you go over to the longest path which is on now so this literally gives you the longest path to the end of the project so if I take that off and what you have here is the project program outlined with all the activities but they're in summary group bars so what I will do is I'll expand the view and then go straight over to the critical path and you watch the difference this is your critical path as you can see so if you look at it all the way down you've got two parallel activities these two parallel activities literally kind of double the risk within your program and what this in essence means is you're multiplying the risk between these two times two because if either of these activities were to be delayed the risk to the program finishing on time will be delayed times two because they both start concurrently overlapping on the same date same as this all the way down they're literally there or thereabouts so if any of these activities were to be delayed the whole of the program will be delayed but for a program the length of the size of this this looks like an awfully small critical path so in essence what you could usually do is instead of using the critical path I always like to use the longest path because that is the longest duration to the end of the project. So all the activities that sum up the longest durations to the end of the project would probably be the truest critical path for you to use. So if we click on that, there you have it. So we've got a few more activities and this is more like it. So if you analyze it right from the top, you've got all of these activities. Some of them are not critical as you can see. And if you look at the total float values for them as well, that would give you some sort of indication. There you go. So all this means is these are the durations that are, the, when you follow the logic right the way through, the driving logic, yes, 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 you see? So it follows all the way through, nice and easy, all the way down. And you do still have some critical activities. I'll just draw it over here for you so you can see it. So yes. You have got some critical activities but it gives you way more information so you're able to manage and track these activities because if either of these activities were to get a delay they would potentially then sneak into the near critical uh, groupings of activities as well even though they have total float values you know of this you know magnitude so the, the the issue here is as soon as they start getting eaten up if you notice the maximum total flow value that we can see here is 40 days so literally that's it so it's just that 40 day duration activity which is right here the mainframe still now if this were to be delayed that eat into all of your total flow values right the way through the project You've got one here for 104 days, it's installation of redesign foundation, which clearly happens a lot earlier in the year, but it is a critical activity. You see that? So, oh, sorry, we're actually looking at the original duration, remaining duration. So if we look at the total flow values, all of the values are actually zero. But then when we turn on the decimals, there is a possibility to uncover, as we said in the last lesson, there you go we just put the two decimal places on there and there you have it you have 0 0.6 so it's not actually zero the reason for that is that it finishes as we said earlier at 4 30 so it's a fraction of that 30 minutes over the eight hours a day and that should give you these values here the 0 0.06 days okay so that's another technique that you could use on your program to kind of do your analysis in terms of your critical path as we said, just a quick recap, the longest path is the truest critical path. It's the uh, sum of the different activities which total the longest duration to the end of the project. I do hope you guys uh, found this useful and you know, I look forward to the next lesson. Thank you very, very much for watching.